Okay, we finished uh, sheet one. Now we're going to do uh, the rest of the test here. Um, so fun stands for functions here. And in cell E19, I want to um, use the sales data in columns D through F and determine the sum. So that's going to be an auto sum here. We'll just do this the easy way. And uh, it wants to do column E, but I want all of the numbers. So let's do that and then hit enter. Um, here I want to do the smallest. So that's another auto sum, and it's going to pick the wrong stuff for me again. But all I need to do is take the mouse and drag it over the stuff that I want and hit enter. Um, here I want the largest value. So let's go to auto sum and whoops, make sure you hit the down arrow and do max. And I missed. Let's try that again. Um, max. And hit enter. And for average down here, let's go up to our auto sum button again and choose average. And again, it chooses the wrong numbers. We need to select the right ones here by dragging the mouse over them and hit enter. And let's go to column H here. Uh, put a formula that will cause the value true to appear if the salesman has reached a quota of 600 or more for any of the three months. And uh, any means uh, or. So let's go to our um, formulas here. And let's go to logical. And let's do or. And logical test number one, was this greater than or equal to, greater than or equal to 600? Logical test number two was E2 greater than or equal to 600. And logical test number three is F2 greater than or equal to 600. And do I have a space in there? No, I don't. And click on OK and it tells us that he met it once and that would have been this month right here okay so most of them met it at least once but it looks like uh, on this row right here none of those numbers are over 600 and on this row here none of those numbers are over 600 and then in column i i want to know if they reach the quota all three months so that's going to be an and And let's go here and let's insert an if, and our logical test is going to be uh, D2, D2. Greater than or equal to 600. And I do not want an if, I want an and. D2 greater than or equal to 600. E2 greater than or equal to 600, F2 greater than or equal to 600, and if all of those are true, then I'll get the value true. And uh, let's see how many have it for all three of them. And it looks like uh, this is the only one right here. Okay, let's do our database stuff. Sort the data in de decreasing order by number of shares. If they have the same number of shares, they should be alphabetical by the stock name. So. If I'm sorting on two things, uh, this is going to be on the data tab. And I'm not sure why these numbers are here, but they're not going away. So just ignore them. So let's do a sort. And I want to sort uh, decreasing number of shares owned. So um, just make sure the cursor is in the data when you start. And I want to sort by um, number of shares. And I want largest to smallest. I want decreasing. And then I want to add a level. And uh, they should be in alphabetical order by the stock name, which is column A. And click on OK. OK, so we got the ones with the most shares at the top. And let's just take a look at this first group of 2,000 here. And those are in alphabetical order, so we're good. Let's go to DB2. Create a filter that displays only those stocks that have a profit of 5,000 or more. Use a rule, not the check boxes. So, uh, just make sure the cursor is someplace in the data and um, turn on filtering and I want the stocks that have a profit right here of 5,000 or more so click on the down arrow 
and do a number filter. You can't do the checkboxes. Got to do a rule. And I want greater than or equal to 5,000. Click on OK. And these are the stocks that have a profit of, and there's my profit column right there, of 5,000 or more. Let's go to DB3. And I want to filter the displays all stocks that have a, the value uh, in a category column that is S or P. So again, make sure the cursor is in the data before you turn filtering on. And this one for text values, you usually almost always do check boxes. So click on OK. And there we go. Last thing we need to do is a chart. Uh, I want a line chart with markers that shows years and one line for each of the five types of energy. And um, I guess we're doing all of the years. So uh, if I want uh, the years and the types there, I've got to select row three. I've also got to select column A. Um, don't select this stuff up here, though. And what I want to do is I want to insert a line with markers. And I want to. Um, have a legend which I do down here at the bottom I want the title should be US energy supply so I can just go here and type uh, US energy supply and set the y-axis uh, title to quadrillions of BTUs and uh, let's go to our chart elements up here. I want axis title and I want a primary vertical title. And uh, I want uh, quadrillions of BTUs. Just type it up here on the formula bar and hit enter. Uh, it's already rotated. Make the chart title 20 points. And go to our home tab for that. And uh, right now it's 16. We will make it 20. Make the text on the horizontal, vertical axis, and legend 14 points. So um, this should be 14. This isn't going to look very good on a small chart. When I move it to another page, it will. And I'm just going to wait until the end to do that because. I don't have to flip back and forth between the instructions and the chart. So rotate the numbers on the horizontal axis 45 degrees, either left or right. So let's right click on that and choose format. And over here on the right, uh, let's check our numbers here and um, Let's see, um, alignment. Um, I want a custom angle. And I'm just going to do bounce on the arrow here until I get it to 45. There we go. And next I'm going to put a minus sign in front of that. I think it looks better the other way. And display minor grid lines every one unit. Leave the major grid lines at 5. Actually, there are 10 now, but. Uh, this might be a time to move it on a page by itself. Let's go to our design tab here and click on move chart and we'll put it on a new sheet. Click on OK and I want minor grid lines every one unit. Yeah, they are by fives now. And uh, so let's uh, right click on our grid lines here, do format grid lines. And um, And actually, that is not on format grid lines. That is on the numbers here. So uh, right click on the numbers and do format axis. And uh, what I want is um, on my axis options, I want my minor unit to be 1. Okay, actually that is over here on our axis here. Uh, right click on one of the numbers and choose add minor grid lines and this may not show up on the video because they're pretty faint, but there are minor grid lines here. 
Okay, and let's go back to our chart page and uh, format the numbers on the y-axis with zero decimal places, format the plot area with a preset gradient, and uh, parchment doesn't exist anymore. That, that should not be there. Um, so let's go back to our chart here. And uh, first of all, I want to format these numbers here. Let's go to number, and let's turn this off so we can see everything here. And um, Actually, this is not the best way to do it. Uh, we should be able to go here and right-click and uh, see format code. Well, um, we want number, and then we want to decrease the decimal places to zero. Uh, and this one here, I'm guessing, probably should have been uh, 14 points as well. I missed that one. And uh, the last thing was to, for the background here, um, and that's the plot area. And so if you click on and you've already got this window open on the right, it should come up with plot area options. And what I want is uh, I want some fill options. And um, to a gradient fill, and uh, it didn't really say which one. Um, let's do uh, let's do like this light blue one right there, and um, that's good. And that takes care of everything for our chart. And that's the end of the practice test.